Hey everybody, it's John DeBellis here at the Commons on spiritandsong.com. Today we're talking with Sarah Hart about her tune, Hallelujah is Our Song. Please stick around. Hi, Sarah. Hi, John. Nice, to, nice see, to see you. Nice to see you, too. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, but more importantly, how are you? I'm well. I'm a little jet lagged. But other than that, I'm well, doing well. Then let's cut right to the chase okay. so you can get some sleep. <laughs> tell, uh, uh, tell us a little bit um, about your song, Hallelujah is Our Song. Sure. Um, uh, for me in particular, I'd like to know a little bit about the inspiration for it and then mm-hmm. also the collaborative process because I know this is a song that was written by you and yeah. some others that maybe you could tell us about. Absolutely. Okay, so um, I wrote this song with three of my very dear friends, Sarah Kroger, who some people know, Josh Blakesley, who some people know, and my very good friend Trey Heffinger, who is a worship leader out of St. Louis. And Trey was in town writing, and Sarah and Josh were in town writing in Nashville. And I said, let's all get together and write. So the four of us sat down at my house in a room and just started chit-chatting. You know, most writing sessions I usually just start chit-chatting and hearing what people have to say and what's on their heart and we were kind of there with the intent of writing for Sarah because she was making a new record and um I just kind of said so what's on your heart and mind and she said this lovely thing that she'd been thinking a lot about this quote lately and it's a quote of Pope John Paul II and uh because she had had just some struggles with you know sorrow and sadness lately and she said he has this great quote that says um we should not despair because we are an Easter people, and hallelujah is our song. And I'm like, wow, that's a great song title. So immediately we just sat down and writing, and it was very interesting because at first I just sat at the piano and started playing and singing some words, and then Trey said, what if we do it like this? And he just started stomping four on the floor, you know, boom, 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 and then it became this kind of folk sound and thing and I'm like oh I like this I like where this is going and this usually doesn't happen to me in co-writes but by the time we were finished with the song I was like Sarah can I record this too (laughs) (laughs) so interestingly enough Sarah and I both have recordings of it it. two Sarah recordings of the same exact songs and there's kind of that both that um sort of bluegrassy feel to both of them. I know that yeah. she has lap steel and yours, yes. and you mentioned that there's, there's fiddle. I definitely and... do have fiddle and lap steel, and it's, it's got, the thing that I really wanted was that four on the floor, because it makes it feel so good, just that drive of little pump pump, you know, it was really, really cool. Um, you mentioned that co-writing process that mm-hmm. you guys talk first, and then it yeah. seems like the uh, it coalesced all around that quote and that verbal idea. Yeah. Does it ever go the opposite direction, where the, it starts from the music first and then the um, words come, or...? Not, Is it usually that way? Not usually. I, I think that for me in the writing process, um, it's sort of pointless to go into a room with an artist or a writer um, without hearing what it is they want to say. Right. Because everybody in their spiritual walk is in such a different place. And unless you can kind of talk for a little bit and speak to it and really find out a little bit about that person's heart and what it is they're walking through and what it is they're going through and something that they feel is important in their ministry to say, you're kind of doing them a disservice if you're just like, okay, I know what we're going to write, and so you just sit there and we're going to write it. I, I think it's more important to get to their heart and, and find out what it is they really want to say and what they want to write about. Um. I've noticed that this song um, has the power to be uh, used and utilized as a song of the assembly, and mm-hmm. I'm wondering what your experience with that has been in, in singing it and sure. performing it. Well, uh, actually, right now in my concert list, it's in the middle of my set, so it's in every set that I do. Uh, and it's really interesting because what I, the way that I've introduced it, because it's a pretty new song, you know, is I'll sing the chorus and then I'll have the congregation sing, and everybody sings right away. And I think it's it's not just that it's a um, it's a pretty easy chorus to sing, but I think also there's a familiarity to it, and there's something about saying "Alleluia" is our song versus "Alleluia" is my song. Um, I love that the word "our" is 
part of it because when we all sing it together then it just kind of becomes this collective thing and that's really beautiful so so far people are responding great when they sing it and it's funny I think when I wrote the song I wasn't considering that I wasn't thinking oh this could be a great assembly piece but now that I've sung it in concert enough I'm like oh yeah this is easily an assembly piece and does that for you personally how is that differ from a song that reflects more about about personal spirituality is there a greater mm-hmm. sense of sharing there and, and empowerment for other people in their mm-hmm. spiritual that's a great question you know I I don't think when I sit down to write a song, I ever think this is going to be a song just from my experience, or this is a song for me, or this is an artist song, or this is a worship song. I think that songs for me just begin very organically, and then they kind of become what they want to become. And uh, this is just one of those that initially became it was one thing it was a song for Sarah Kroger to be an artist and put on her record and then it just bloomed into something completely different and I love that about songs I I never cease to marvel this is probably gonna sound crazy to you I never cease to marvel at the miracle of walking into a room sitting down with a few people and walking out of the room having created something that didn't exist before. That astounds me. And I love the process of that because it so clearly emulates just the beauty of Creator God. You know, I don't know. That's a miracle to me. Yeah. Well, and how wonderful that what you're writing about is also giving praise and thanks for that gift yeah. back to the person that gave you the gift to do it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But I'm also one of those people who thinks, you know, if you're living a life of faith, then everything you do is informed by your faith. Whether I'm writing a song um, about God or a worship song or whether I'm writing a song about hamburgers or whether I'm cooking a hamburger, you know, like really all of it, if your life is informed by faith, then everything you do and everything you touch will will be some expression of that faith. Well, thanks, Sarah, very much. And uh, stick around and hopefully we'll hear a song about hamburgers <laughs> as well as Hallelujah is our song. Stay tuned. <laughs> we have even in the longest night for the light will overcome we will not fear for we know the sun will rise hallelujah is our song what peace we have even in this wounded world where the battle rages on we will not fear for we know who heals our souls hallelujah is our song joy 